We're doing a uh, rhubarb cured hamachi. That's cool. Get a little sweetness from the beets and the plums. I was just gonna go straight rhubarb. It would be a little like a little too tart and bitter for what I'm looking for. So we uh, cure it and then it's a very subtle flavor. My wife was just trying to talk me into uh, doing a juice cleanse with her. Uh -huh. She just signed up for it. Okay. Spends 50 fucking four dollars a day yeah. on six little things of juice. For the convenience of it all, I get it, but it's just like $54. It's like you've got to be kidding me. Mmm. My name's Harold Dieterle, and I'm the, the chef owner of the Marrow. The Marrow is a, a, a meat focused restaurant, German and Italian uh, accents based on my heritage. I grew up in kind of a split household, Italian-American, and my paternal side of the family, the food was very German. So I kind of split the menu down, and one side is named uh, Shirelli, of my Italian heritage, and the German side is Dieterli. It's a very, it's a very personal restaurant that, you know, brings me back to my childhood quite a bit. The schnitzel dish is like, kind of out of my grandmother's playbook a bit. She didn't use duck, she usually used chicken or pork. We didn't really eat much veal back then because it's expensive. The spetzel recipe is hers, and the cucumber potato salad is her recipe as well. Yeah. But aside from that, everything else is kind of like, you know, the little perks of stuff that I saw as a kid. The spaghettini, just kind of making my family's crap sauce. When I was 15 years old, I took a home ec uh, class in high school to meet girls. <laughs> I had really bad ADD, a terrible student, and I was just like, really, focused and, and into cooking and, and culinary arts. Yeah, I won the first season of Top Chef. At the time, I really enjoyed competition, and obviously I love to cook, so it sounded like a great idea, and it was amazing exposure, it was an amazing experience, but I don't think I could do it again. I, I enjoy doing television, and I enjoy you know, that aspect, but I, I, I feel much more comfortable inside a kitchen. How's our listening skills behind you? It's a very busy restaurant, so the kitchen's busy every day. What do you got? Hamachi, I'll take that, babe. Thank you, sir. The chef needs to be able to put a lot of different faces on, like fabricate meat, making sauces, making sure the specials are sorted out, working on the menu. God forbid that there's like a repair maintenance situation, like I could be in the bathroom with a plunger in my hand. Yeah. It sucks, but you know, it's a full day. So after work last night, I met my buddy John Frazier over at uh, Blue Ribbon Sushi up by the Time Warner Center. John and I have known each other, I guess it's probably close to six years, six years now. He came in for dinner and he sent me a really, really sweet email like, really enjoyed the dinner, thank you so much, I really love the duck, or something like that. You rarely get that kind of interaction, like uh, so earnest and honest. So I, I saw him at the party. I might not even have responded. I can't remember. I said, oh, it was really nice of you. And uh, fast friends. But there's a, a level of hosing that goes on between he and I. No one would know we were friends unless, unless <laughs> afterwards there was a hug. Where's your shirt? So you get all dressed up. No, what happened? Oh, it's fun. When we get the blue ribbon, the usual routine is uh, drink as many uh, yuzu highs as possible. Games begin. Cheers. I forget how better the hangover these fucking things are. Oh, how many of those have you had tonight? Where's your cocktail? So Richard, who I believe is the general manager there, is the, the fellow who usually gets us set up either at the bar or upstairs and, and keeps, a, keeps a good eye out for us. Look at this, we got WWF wrestling on over here. I mean, it's like, it's, it's unbelievable. No, just Muay Thai. I don't like to, I only like to kick and punch people. I don't like to roll in the mouth with other dudes. It's not my thing. <laughs> what the fuck are you laughing about? Okay. <laughs> I had a hamachi sashimi, and then they put out a kind of a mixed sushi plate. Are you really doing this? What, putting some soy sauce on my fish? The whole, uh, the whole plate. <laughs> what? <laughs> First of all, 
John eats more french fries than anybody I know in the world because they're vegetarian. I've never seen anybody that goes out to eat and eats more f fucking fried That's potatoes. absolutely true. That's totally true. John's a vegetarian. He doesn't crave any animal products anymore, so he's, he's all vegetables. The choices for vegetarians in New York City is fucking deplorable. Really? It's deplorable. One dish where you can beg somebody, it's fucking shit. Whatever his body is telling him is great, but you know, he's my best friend and I know he enjoys meat. I've seen him destroy it. You had the fucking shish kebab that was just loaded with fucking bell peppers on top of bell peppers. There was a couple slices of zucchini and some fucking rice. $26. <laughs> you can't tell me you're not miserable. Fucking miserable. Who are you talking to? Restaurant. Everything all right? Health department? Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's count the 12 herbs real quick. Who the fuck would put 12 herbs in one dish? I'm gonna find out. It's gonna be two of each, right? Three, four, five. When we're out acting like buffoons, but then we have to take a, a work phone call. You know, we have to flip the switch and turn that other side of our personality on. What's 12 herbs? Yeah, we're doing the new giddy. You shut the fuck 12 up. 12 herbs in one dish? It was very enjoyable. Thyme, tarragon, sorrel, singing nettles. It's springtime. Let's get a little some fucking. <laughs> I can't fucking You're still talking, right? <laughs> I couldn't find out what the 12 herbs were. I'm very excited to see it. Tell me that doesn't look fucking sick. Tell me you don't eat that. Shut the fuck up. Blue ribbon fried chicken is kind of my, my standby. It's a delicious fried chicken, but you know, it's just the same flavor over and over and over again. My mouth doesn't understand how a whole plate of that tastes good. We left Blue Ribbon and we went down and had a quick pop at one of my favorite bars, Daddio's. Walked in the Daddio's and uh, it was quite a scene. Everybody was kind of in the neighborhood, and that's really like the bar that a lot of chefs go to. It's a great, it's a great chef hangout bar. They have a great hamburger. Kato tots are great. So it, that's always a plus. It's a sports bar. They have a lot of TVs going on, and like a really serious liquor bottle list. It's like it's pretty impressive that the, the bottles of liquor that he has there, with, and great, great specialty cocktails. So it's just like you know, it's great for everything. I had no idea anybody was going to be there. So I was like, all right, let's go back. Let's go back to the Marrow, go eat some bratwurst. We have bratwurst over at the Marrow right now. We're gonna go over there and have a little bratwurst. How's it mean? It looks like that 930 spin class might be getting canceled. Uh -oh. You ready? You walking or you driving? We have our wheels, bro. Alright. Josh decided to ride his beloved bike, which I was unaware is, you know, kind of like his child. It was a bit of a Kiwi's big adventure situation happened. We walked over from Dio's on a 10-15 minute walk. It was nice to get a little fresh air. Matt, who's the, the chef here, and Eric, who's my chef at, at Kinshop, were uh, throwing off some house-made bratwurst and some sauerkraut. You got some vegetarian action coming tonight or no? Yeah. There's only one. There can only be one. Fuck, man, I didn't know how long it takes. How many guys did it take to grill a couple of fucking bratwurst here? Oh my god. Everybody's milking the clock tonight. I hear you. I don't think you need to cook all those. No, no, no. I think that's. that's, that's, that's this, is, this is brunch. This is brunch right here? They don't look any nice china. No fucking way. You're gonna fucking wreck it. Here we go. Go get it. Got some mustard, some brats. What do we got? What do we got over here? We got some uh, braised cabbage. What do we got? Some, uh, we got some uh, beer braised sauerkraut. Oh, Everybody kind of sat down and was eating and drinking, and that's about as nice as it got. There's a lot of a lot of conversations, a lot of a lot of people throwing shots at each other. It's very very entertaining. Oh, wait a second, the vegetarian yeah. got a meal. Even though the vegetarian ate the cabbage with the bacon and tasted my bratwurst, he's had a nice veggie plate. What is it? It's a carrot. 
Not a sausage if that's what you're saying. Exactly. So it's sausage in New Jersey look like these days, huh? The girls are 100 percent right. That's not what sausage looks like in New Jersey. In your veggie plate. Bang! All the small sausages look the same to you, huh, Joshy? Yeah, that's yeah. It was a great group of people. I consider everybody that was, you know, at the table. Uh, you know, very I'm very friendly with What's going on down over there? What the hell is going on? Clearly. He's got a wooden leg shoved up the stairs. Arrow! <laughs> <laughs>